This is Lawrence Sherman from the Global Fertility Academy. Recently, in Lisbon, Portugal, during the 31st annual ESHRAE meeting, I sat down with some of the world's top thought leaders and discussed the challenges and opportunities faced in fertility today. Join me for this very exciting interview. It's good to see you, PC. Same here, Lawrence. So, uh, you know, one of the things I know you have great interest in is pre-implantation uh, genetics, PGS, in the IVF laboratory. Uh, and, and this continues to grow. How do you expect the increasing roles of PGS to change and impact your practice? Right now, as far as my practice is concerned, in Singapore, we are not allowed to do PGS. But, uh, but that does not um, take away from the fact that PGS is a rather important area in uh, ART. Um, we, we all know about the high uh, aneuploidy rate among the embryos, so the use of PGS will be so important in helping us to pick the normal embryos uh, for embryo transfer. So, so you, using your looking glass into the right. future, you see the, the role of PGS increasing and helping us to, be, to have better outcomes? Yes. I think definitely what I'm looking for is that with the passing of every year, I'm sure the cost of the test is going to come down lower and lower. That's when we're going to see PGS being a, a major step or major part of any IVF program. It's when it gets very affordable, I think then more and more cycles will use uh, PGS. Right. You, you know, something you and I talk about a lot and have an interest in is sort of crossing borders with reproductive care. And, yes. and we see a lot about that in the media. Yes. Uh, what impact do you think the continued increase of this crossing of borders and cross-border care um, will impact fertility treatments as you see it in Singapore and throughout the region? One thing is for sure, for IVF practitioners, we have to be well familiar with the way the, the movement is going, the cross-border movement is going. So as an example, again, I take Singapore for example. Uh, Singapore, like many countries, may, may not approve of surrogacy. So patients will move out to the next country where surrogacy is practiced or where sex selection is practiced. So with the, with the increasing role of the internet, and to me, I think budget airlines, people now do fly wherever they want to, to seek the treatment they need. And therefore, this will further uh, propel the cross-border reproductive services. So patients are going to move to countries where they can get the services that they want. And how about the, the sort of the regionalization of the ASEAN region and the ability for, for practitioners to move? Do you think that'll have an impact as well? In, in, in Asia, I think it's unlikely for physicians to move uh, because of uh, pra uh, for uh, licensing reasons. But I think definitely patients will move. Every region struggles with the increasing need for embryology training. Um, as the fertility services continue to grow, uh, the need has become critical. Yes. I, I'm sure you'd agree with that. Um, how do you think improving the number of quality embryologists can best be addressed? I think that's the biggest, if not one of the biggest uh, problem uh, or bottlenecks as far as development of, of uh, IVF in, in, the, in the region, and that is the lack of uh, well-trained embryologists. So that is one of the uh, impetus for me to found uh, CREST, the center, uh, set up mainly to deal with this problem of how we can train embryologists. But taking, moving away from CREST, I think the most important thing is for, for, for centers in the region in Asia to focus a little bit more on the training of embryologists, to spend some time thinking how best we can train embryologists. And uh, one of the things we are doing in GFA in terms of education, trying to put it on a web-based module, I think this is one step whereby we can reach many people at one time. But then that leads us to the second step, and that is the preceptorship. Right? After having done the web-based study, they need to get into the laboratory to see how this is being done. So I think uh, for GFA and for others in this uh, medical education scene, uh, that is the next area that we need to focus on, how to get as many embryologists into the lab for preceptorship and for hands-on training. Yeah, I think you hit two really important points there uh, related to the education. And one is sort of using that flipped classroom model where you prepare P 
people by doing the online learning so yes. that when they get to the preceptorship, they have that minimum level of understanding. That's correct, yes. A and I think it also talks about the need for multi-channel education so yes. that I it's preparation and it's going to the way people like to learn. So I I I'm glad you brought that up. Right. Uh, we also think about the quality and, and quality management systems when we think about success and, and outcomes in fertility. With that in mind, what do you think the, the growing focus on quality management systems will have on ART and ART outcomes? Talking from the Asia point of view, you can see as the development of uh, ART, first we develop the technique of ART, and when people are getting good at what they are doing, then and then next thing in terms of quality management and uh, quality control. So in Asia now, we see that more and more people are now thinking about uh, quality management system. And therefore, example in Aspire, which as you know, I'm related to, I mean, I'm involved with Aspire, and we are also thinking about how we can introduce quality management system into our network. In other words, running courses, uh, running uh, workshops to, to teach interested people about introducing quality management system into their practice. And already we are seeing a lot of um, interest in this. So as an example, next year's Aspire meeting, we're going to have a workshop on uh, teaching people on quality management system. So yes, definitely getting more and more important. More and more people are thinking about it. And uh, so regionally, uh, this is being looked at. And I think for Aspire, as for GFA, and for all these uh, uh, training uh, institution and, and, and societies, there's definitely a need for us to, to look into this. So I have a question that could be either very easy for you or very difficult. Okay. What's the one most important piece of information you would share with a colleague to help improve ART outcomes? Okay, that's going to be easy. Oh, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I will say is continual development continuing update with what's happening uh, in our, our field of ART and that can be either in the form of attending a conference reading our journals and of course we increasingly I think a lot of a lot of information is flowing through the internet and I think we just got to keep up with the masses of information that is coming on and the only thing is to keep abreast of all these developments so simple stay up to date yeah PC it's always a pleasure to talk with you thank you very much Lawrence